Hi, I'm Alicia Main. I help animals heal their behavior, health, and end of life issues naturally. And I assist them in helping their humans heal their hearts. I am the animal healer. Oh, and did I mention, I'm not usually in the room, state, or country that they're located in when we do our sessions. Join me weekly for Animal Healer TV Live as we explore quantum reality and learn just what's possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, health, and hearts through the quantum energy field. Hey guys, it's Alicia Main, the Animal Healer, and welcome to another episode. Today, I'm really excited. We're kind of traveling and spanning the globe today. We're going to be working with Mary Bacchaeus and Oscar, who happen to be in Cairo, Egypt. So Oscar's been having some issues that Mary's going to share with us, and we're going to see what we can do to help him. All right, Mary, will you share with us Oscar and his background and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much Alessia. I'm, I'm really thrilled that you're going to work with Oscar and me. Uh, it was my dream. I saw some film before uh, you working with the Wild Mustang and it was amazing what you did with that horse. And I always thought, oh my god, I wish Alessia could work with Oscar. Little I knew that the universe really conspired to get us all together. <laughs> so that's wonderful. <laughs> so my dream came true anyway. When I found him, it was 2015, and he must have been at that time about uh, 15 years old. Uh, he was, he's quite a strong, big boy. Because of his size, most probably, they tried to make him work in a cart because he was a very strong horse. So he has all the markings on the neck and on the back from the harness of the, of the cart. You can clearly tell he was working and they told us also. Then somebody took him uh, to Dahab, which is 800 kilometers from Cairo. It is a town that is next to the sea, opposite Israel almost. They took him to Dahab, uh, where it is not a natural place for horses to be because there is absolutely no green. All their food has to be imported from somewhere. There is nothing natural for an animal to graze, nothing. So uh, the times were very difficult in Egypt because of the terrorism and all these things. And uh, the tourists were not coming. So the guy who had four horses there abandoned them and a few ladies from uh, Dahab, uh, they found out about what happened to these four horses that they were left to without water, without food, without anything. And they just uh, put that on the Facebook and we try to collect money to try to save these horses and also feed them. I traveled there, I got Oscar and another horse and uh, we put him in a wonderful facility, uh, Egypt Equine Aid. He was rehabilitated there, he became fatter and everything, they were training him, everything was fantastic, quite a strong horse. But he always had a very good personality, an excellent personality. Uh, what everybody kept on telling me that they said this horse is one in a million, one in a million, one in a million, so I kept on hearing that all the time. After two years I had him, Unfortunately, uh, due to financial reasons, I couldn't keep him anymore. So I had to find a good home for him. And finding a good home in Egypt is almost non-existent. One of my neighbors decided he wanted to have him. I knew him. I never thought that he could be a bad person or something. So um, I said, OK, you can have him. But uh, you must know that this horse can never be sold as you take it for free. You have to know if there is any problem, please call me back, I'll come and pick up the horse. Uh, of course, it didn't happen. Eventually, he just abandoned the animal completely. I didn't know. Um, I just had uh, some contact with one of the grooms who used to work in the first stable where I gave him for adoption. And through him only, I managed to have some idea what was happening to the horse. Apparently, the guy stopped paying completely 
the people uh, called him several times to tell him that if he doesn't pay, we are going to um, uh, sell the horse. Uh, he didn't answer even back. He didn't even call me. And what happened is that they, because he was a very good horse, they started using him for show, for show jumping and also for the school there. Uh, of course, he was not fed properly. He was not dewormed. Uh, his uh, hooks were in a very, very bad uh, uh, situation. It was bad. When I went there to see him, it, it was really horrid. I, I, I couldn't believe his state. I had to do everything to get him out of there. And I did it. So the incident uh, I had with him, uh, what happened? Um, yeah. uh, he was. He's usually very calm. He's a very calm animal. He just doesn't like sometimes other horses to take his space for some reason. And then I walked inside the manager and I was walking in front of him, uh, trying to put him about maybe five, 10 meters to get him out of the door. And then he, he got, I don't know, suddenly he attacked me on my right hand and he just beat me over there and pushed me on the ground. So it was not a real, real attack because a real attack would, would be more, uh, more him, let's say, stampeding or really continuing the aggression. It was not the case. There is something else. Definitely, he has a lot of issues. Let's bring him out. Let's do some body work. And while we're doing the body work, we will ask him, you know, his perspective on what's happening. Now you can see him. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's turn him out so he's free and loose so that when okay. I work on him... You want to put him in the manege? Places. Yeah. There he is. Oh. <laughs> he's going in the other corner. <laughs> he's beautiful. He is beautiful. He's a beautiful boy. Yeah. Opa, opa. <laughs> Maybe actually to walk in so you can get, you know, let us see his eyes up close. Like, let us see who, yeah. Oh, he's so handsome. Wow. Wow. All right, Oscar. We're going to connect with you right now, okay? God, is he handsome. All right. So I'm going to start with my fingers <clears throat> on the top of his head in between his ears. He's moving his ears now. Yeah, he feels it. So so you're in Cairo and I'm in Colorado and we're at least six to 7,000 miles away from each other. So I've got my fingers right on the top of his head, right between his ears. And that right side was feeling a little pushed down and the left side is feeling a little pushed up. So I'm just gonna work on balancing that. And it's fine too, like if he, it's fine if he's eating, I'm not too worried about it. Might make him feel more comfortable at this moment. There we go. Whoa. All right, I'm gonna go to C1. So C1 on the right is pushed forward. On the left, it's rolled backwards. So I'm just gonna gently adjust C1. Okay, so now we're gonna go to C2. C2 is pinched inward towards the center of his spine. So I'm just gonna open that up. Yeah, he's, he's shaking his shoulder. Okay. Both ways now. Okay. Still shaking. C3 is compressed kind of inward on both sides. So on the left it's pushed in and on the right it's pushed in. The right side is a little higher than the left. So I'm just gonna rebalance that and let's see if we could see his head a little bit better. There we go. Yep, perfect. Ow. So that's C3 rebalancing. Uh, now we're going to go to C4. C4 
54 is okay. Hi, Oscar. Hi, Anton. C5. C5 is stuck on the left. It's kind of pushed inward towards the center. So I'm just going to release the fascia there. Ooh. Oh, boy. His whole like head and neck is kind of jammed. But this is opening it. It's like a gateway. Like all, everything else that was gotten to alignment, this is reestablishing a much different flow for him. Okay, that's opening a lot, and he seems a lot less interested in the food right now. Like he's still looking, but it feels like he's noticing his body more. What are you noticing? He is walking. Yeah. He's investigating. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're on T1. T1 is rotated backward on the right and forward on the left. So just releasing that. So he might, depending on what's taking place in his body for him, he might go into spaces where he's very short breathing. And then all of a sudden he might take a really big deep breath. T4. T4 on the left is pushed forward. On the right, it's rolled backwards. So we're just going to release the fascia there. And now we're going to go to T8. T8 is very high on the right, low on the left. So I'm just gently releasing that for him. Okay, moving into his lumbar. So lumbar one is pushed in and compressed downward on the left. And on the right, it's pulled up towards the ceiling. So I'm just gonna rebalance that. He lifts his tail a little bit higher than before. Okay, good. Now we're gonna go to a sacrum. So sacrum one is pinched in the center. So I'm just gonna open that. Sacrum two. Sacrum three is compressed down on the left and pushed up on the right. Okay, good boy. Sacrum four. It's okay. And sacrum five. Sacrum five is a um, little rotated on the left from like nine o'clock to 12 o'clock. And then on the right, it's about uh, three o'clock to six o'clock. So it's kind of rotated left to right. So I'm just going to rebalance that for him. So now he's just kind of peaceful and finally tuning in. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to check his shoulder. So his left shoulder is tighter in, in the pec area and his right, and it's a little higher than the right. So I'm just going to rebalance those so it's easier for him to move in balance. Now he's, you saw him lick and chew a little bit and he's just standing still. He has a wound there from the ill-fitting of sudden. All right, and now I'm gonna go from his chest bone. I'm gonna draw a line all the way down through his um, front legs, all the way down through his belly, just about to his umbilical cord. So it relaxes the whole emotional center of his being. And I'm still bringing that down. I'm about halfway down between his chest and his belly. So he, you know, with everything that happened, you know, through his life, he's a big guy. He's got a beautiful, you know, beautiful soul. But I don't think he was so grounded in his body. In the past, he had a lot of areas of pain and discomfort that he kind of had to shut down to. Yes. So as big as he is, there's a part of him that's also a little bit shut down. And hopefully this is gonna help him really just like let go of all of that stuff and be able to be in his body and feel good and even the uh, 
you know, what's been going on with probably his ears pinning and him coming forward or him going after your arm. I think a lot of that is really going to shift. He had done that and then we got in touch with each other because it might have been his way of saying, hey, I need some more help. I think we, we both need help. It could be something he was trying to push me or remind me or wake me up on something or yes, asking for help definitely or else it would have never happened this way. But definitely yeah. that was some type of pushing. Wake up, I want something or you need something. Okay, so, so right here while he's pretty relaxed and he's standing still and I'm still working that energy line down the center of his body. Um, would you feel comfortable enough like relaxing or breathing and just allowing yourself because when that something like that happens it's extraordinarily scary and yeah. we're not really going to get the message at the moment but if you relax and breathe and stand with him now do you sense in your own body what he was trying to get your attention about yeah yeah, okay. he already communicated that with me a few days back. Uh huh. I told you about this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He 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 wanted to to tell me something. Sometimes it's just like, look, I've been trying to get this message through to you. Do you get it now? Like, I and it could be something for them that they need, but it can also be something for us that we're actually having to make a change in a pattern that we've been going through. And if we don't take it as a personal affront, we just kind of take it as, oh my God, you've been, you're, you're obviously trying to get a very clear message across to me that I haven't been listening to. Yes. A lot of the times we'll hear things from them and it yes. just really makes a lot of sense depending on where we're at, what we're going through. I, I do believe that uh, my relation with uh, with Oscar, this last time that I saved him for a third time, it has completely changed. I have never had ever this uh, beautiful kind of connection of the soul, because also the times we are going through on Earth, it is we are it, this uh, fifth dimension is absolutely amazing because it helps us see the animals in a totally different light. Yes. So so my relation with him is completely different. I cannot even relate to what it was before. Nothing. It's the day and the night. No comparison. Wow. He's talking to me, definitely. So Mary, if I may, Oscar has gone through a lot of different things. But the reality for him as a force, he feels that he is a healer. And he said, you are also a healer and you two are going to be working together to be shifting energies for people, to be able to help people shift their emotional states, like people that have gone through traumatic times or people that have gone through things that have really been hard for them to process and he said neither one of you is going to have to take on anyone else's energy to to help them but just them being in your presence and his presence actually yeah. it is it is amazing what you say because it's been in my mind lately um, for the past a few months that, and especially lately, lately, I really want to do this. I would love to be able to get another maybe mayor uh -huh. and have them together to be like a, a therapy horses. He said now he wants you to feel like instead of you were taking care of him, he wants to feel, he wants you to feel like you two are partnering with each other. So like, you don't have to do this by yourself. He's also calling this space in. He said, and just keep focusing on it and keep feeling it in your heart. What it feels like that you guys are together 
that he's also got a partner, that you're on your land, and that you two are really doing this together. He's wanting to step up in partnership with you. And he feels very different to me. His whole, his, like he's, he has that soft, beautiful eye, but it feels even softer and gentler. Like, uh, my yeah. sense is that Oscar is an amazing manifester. Like we don't really think about animals as manifestors, right? But like my horse, he always, whenever I have to move him, he always manifests a phenomenal place for himself. So allow yourself to recognize that you don't have to do this alone. Yes. That Oscar also wants to partake in manifesting a really beautiful place for both of you. And you know, by the way, right now he looks totally different. What looks and he's different? About, I mean, I feel him different, but what looks different and what feels different to you? Uh, his energy. He's he's yawning, as you see. You see, yeah. he's yawning and uh, he's chewing, and I can see his eyes. He's more confident. Yeah. He's not sad anymore. He's more oh, together. Beautiful. I can see it. You can Excellent. see it also if you look at him. You will see he's more together. He, he's a he's a more happy horse. Look at him. He's he's keep on yawning and yawning and yawning. I'm in tears because he's um, he's such a special boy. He's such a special horse to me. I'm sure he must have been with me in a past lifetime. Wow, he's beautiful. He's been through a lot. Yes, you know, he's been, been through, through a lot. lot. Yes, he's he's ready to walk with you, you know, walk beside you in that 5D reality. So this is yes. very exciting. Hi, Alicia. Good afternoon. Uh, I came here. Uh, it's around uh, 130 in the afternoon and uh, I was asking uh, here how he was doing these days I mean since we did the session and uh, they said that uh, he's much calmer than before way calmer than before and uh, first of all I wanted to thank you very very much for this uh, amazing transformation that uh, we went through both of us um, I know that for a lot of people this is something they cannot comprehend but actually we are so so much connected with our horses in an amazing way. What I wanted to share is that by, um, by healing Oscar you actually did heal me because Oscar has a strong personality and I did used to have a strong personality and unfortunately the let's say the hurricane of life has taken me to another way and I forgot who I was completely I forgot I was an alpha female by him pushing me and biting me he showed me so 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 many things one of the things he showed me is that I did allow people to walk all over me and this is not going to happen anymore. I'm just taking, claiming back my sovereignty, I'm claiming back my power. I will no longer allow either Oscar or any other human being to just walk all over me. We are in a culture here in an oriental culture where a woman especially, she's first a good daughter, then she's a good wife, she's a good mother, and good whatever. And sometimes here in our culture we forget to put uh, boundaries. And this is one of, I believe, my biggest problem, and this is what Oscar came to remind me by biting me. And. I really cannot thank you enough because all is so connected. My God, I've been working with myself forever. But right now, a few hours back, I was feeling really like a volcano. 
all this amazing energy of uh, alpha female was just emerging very strong very 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 strong from now on my relationship with Oscar is going to be totally different and my relationship with other people in my life is going also to be totally different I really cannot thank you enough I really cannot thank you enough it, it, you did an amazing job with both of us I think Oscar agrees too though he loves his food so much he did snort anyway again thank you so 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 much God bless you and you did an amazing an amazing job with both of us thank you so much Alice Thanks for watching today's episode of Animal Healer TV. We hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you learned about yourselves and your animals. We'd also love to hear what issues are you dealing with that you'd most like to see on the show. If you'd like to participate in an episode, please see the link below and share with us the issues that you're having with your animals. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Insta, and please feel free to share with your friends. Join us next week for another episode of Animal Healer TV, where we will explore quantum reality and see what else is possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, their health, and each other's hearts.